Hello everyone. Today I am talking about reporting and reporting is something that is very important for any service provider really, but particularly those in the marketing and social media spaces. So I want to take you behind the scenes of what my actual social media reports look like and also just kind of talk about why they're important. So the reason I wanted to create this video is because honestly, a lot of the issues or questions or, you know, problems that I see come up in my Facebook group, my, my membership community, my mentorship program, and even just on the web, you know, on blogs, on forums, on Twitter, issues with clients could often be solved or remedied by having regular and proper client communication. And I think that a formal report with data, because numbers don't lie, is one of the best ways to get into a regular communication schedule with your clients. So I recommend doing a social media report no less than monthly for your clients. And I actually take them through this report as well. So I say put that on the calendar as a meeting in addition to just sending it their way. The reason for that is because as you'll see, this is kind of a lot of information and there's a lot of things that your clients aren't really going to understand and it's not their job to understand. It's your job as the service provider to help them understand why it's important to their business. Now, another thing that I hear before I get into the report is what if my client doesn't want it? What if they are like, I'm too busy for this meeting. I'm too busy for this report. I don't care if you do the report. And you know what? Reporting is something I will never eliminate and I don't recommend that you do either. Give clients reports, even if they're not asking for them or even if you, you know, technically don't have it in your package because it's only going to help you. Social media in particular is one of those things that's kind of like, out of sight, out of mind, they're probably going off of likes and followers and just kind of the things that meet the naked eye, right? They probably are not taking a deep dive into their analytics and seeing how many impressions they're getting, how many clicks they're getting, um, what sentiment is on their posts, what posts you're performing best, all of those things really need a deep breakdown. And often when I sit there and I share these metrics with people, they will be like floored. And it, it, again, it just makes my job easier. It sells the value of what I'm doing a little bit better than me just explaining, Hey, we really like got a lot of eyes on your content this month, you know? So that's how I feel about that. All right. So let's dive into this report. I used my own personal social channels as an example. So these are obviously just my own numbers and they're probably not great because I'm very much a do as I say, not as I do kind of person and I'm focusing on my clients and not so much on myself. So these numbers might not be amazing. So what I do is I break up the metrics by platform. So I go in and I just use the native analytics tools personally on these social platforms. There are some other tools that you can use to kind of aggregate your data. I like Scythe, I believe is how you say it for paid media or maybe some more complex reporting. If I'm going to do Google analytics and Facebook and, you know, different things like that, I might use a tool like that, but for just a plain social report, I just go right into the analytics of the social channels themselves. So go into LinkedIn and for our LinkedIn page. And I just pull out a couple of data points. So I like charts. I feel like clients like charts. So I just simply take a screenshot of some interesting charts or some meaningful charts that really tie back to their goals. Now, something else to know about this report is that this is really for, um, an awareness kind of, kind of goal, right? I don't necessarily have one campaign that I'm going after. I'm not like trying to measure clicks to a particular product or something like that. This is just kind of an evergreen monthly report. So the metrics that I'm reporting on here are impressions and followers, because those are good measures of awareness and just kind of brand growth overall. So I took a screenshot of some impressions. I actually didn't post on LinkedIn in the past six months. So this is, like I said, pretty bad, but it shows some spikes there. And I technically was up from the last 30 days. I was up 17%. So that's just kind of how I format that, give a little bit of data there. And then I also like to break things down on the next page by top posts. I think this is really important to see because we can look at all these charts and graphs and stuff, but like, what does it all really mean? And where do those impressions come from? So I did top posts by clicks 
And this one is important because you're seeing if people are actually taking action on your content as opposed to just liking it or commenting it on it, they're actually going over to what you want them to click on. So I just took a screenshot of those. If this was blown up at 100%, they'd actually be able to see the posts. Um, and then I did the same thing for impressions. So this is where all those impressions came from. Mostly these two posts here were our most popular posts by impressions. So the reason that this is important, again, to demonstrate these screenshots is so that you can look for trends. You can see, okay, maybe these links or these videos or whatever these things have in common, faces, maybe these types of things are really resonating with our audience. Maybe it was a particular hashtag we used. Maybe it was a particular style of copywriting. So you're really trying to look for trends here so that you can replicate that or so that you can not do that again if it's something that you know really didn't work. And then on the last page here, I just have some key takeaways. So these were just jotted, again, this is for me, so it's like not quite as um, formal or detailed as I would give to a client, but I just added a couple of things that you know, trends that I saw. So half of the top posts featured faces and images of the team or people that we were working with. So that's something important to keep in mind. People do really respond to faces. So if we maybe post some more photos or try posting more videos on LinkedIn, they might actually continue to perform well. Uh, we're also gonna continue to test different hashtag sets as I mentioned. And one of the things I added here is that the team can really work on employee advocacy. So mentioning the page when they're posting, you know, a James and Park blog article, they can tag at James and Park Creative on LinkedIn to kind of bring some more traffic to the LinkedIn page. They can like some of those posts. I don't think any of the team members liked any of those posts. So that's a good way to get some more eyeballs on that content. And then I also said Latasha, the social media manager, me, is going to work on a consistent posting schedule because as I mentioned, I hadn't posted for six months. So I still need to do that um, coming soon. Facebook, you know, organic reach, like the same thing here. I hadn't posted in like a month or something on my Facebook page. So actually I think it was like a couple weeks or, or a week or so, but organic reach was down 26%. So, you know, this is a good example of a bad metric, right? Like obviously in these reports, you're gonna wanna pull out the highlights and the good things, but you're also gonna wanna pull out any major areas of opportunity. And I know that's sometimes hard. You're like, oh my gosh, reach is down, posts are down, whatever. How do I explain this? But as long as you can explain it and as long as you have an action plan for it, clients are gonna be okay with that, typically, you know? I mean, unless it's completely tanked and you just, everything's terrible, then maybe there's a cause for concern. But it's important to call those things out so that they know, rather than, than them go into their analytics themselves and see that things are down and have no clue what the strategy is or why these things are. So the positive to this is that engagement was down 1%, so that's pretty steady. So another thing about this is, you know, yes, it's down by 1%, which is barely anything. So sometimes it's about how you say things, not necessarily what exactly you're saying. I could have said engagement was down 1%, but 1% isn't a big drop. So it's pretty steady, right? Like that looks a lot better than saying engagement is down. Now, if it was down 10% or even 5%, I would probably say it's down. 1% isn't down enough for me to consider it down. That's just a, within the normal like margin of error or um, not margin of error, but you know, just normal fluctuations in posting. Same thing with nearly 200 post engagements, right? So I think the total post engagement was 189. Nearly 200 sounds a little bit more impressive than 189. Similarly, if it was a lower number, if it was 101, I would say over 100. I wouldn't say 101. So sometimes it's a little bit more about how you say things than what exactly you're saying. You're not lying, obviously, but you're massaging the data to um, make it a little bit more digestible and a little bit less alarming if there are areas of concern. So again, here we have our top post by reach, we have our top post by engagement, which are similar photos, at least um, one of them is the exact same. So again, in our key takeaways, we're looking for those trends. We're saying image posts seem to perform really well, the highest out of any type. Um, Latasha's gonna work on scheduling evergreen posts to fill the content calendar. And I skipped that first point, but it says our overall reach is down due to a decrease in posts. So again, like I said, the numbers weren't amazing on Facebook, but we, we didn't barely post on Facebook. So that's why those numbers are down. So 
There's the problem, there's the explanation for the problem, and there's the action plan. Is Latasha's gonna work on scheduling evergreen content, right? If I were to just say, our overall reach is down due to a decrease in posts, bye. <laughs> like, that's not helpful. They're gonna be like, well, why are they down? What's, what's the issue? But we're already working on it, we're being proactive about it, we're gonna fix it, and next month it's gonna be better. Instagram, so Instagram is a little bit different. They don't have like a web platform for their analytics. There are uh, tools you can use, so you can use whatever you want, but I just like the native analytics, so I just take a screenshot on my phone. The thing about Instagram though, is they do only show you weekly. So what I also do in addition to this report is I have spreadsheets for each of my clients where I measure KPIs every single week. I pull them every Friday. I just plop them into a spreadsheet. It's nothing fancy. It's like super simple actually. Uh, but that's just for me to have. So that way at the end of the month for Instagram, I can calculate the monthly data since it does only show you weekly on this overall uh, you know, activity feed screen. So keep that in mind. But reach impressions followers, they were all up. We reached over 4,700 people in the past seven days on Instagram. And then I show the top posts by reach and I add up all of that reach, which was over 25,000, which seems like a lot to me for somebody with a small Instagram account like myself. So that is a, a cool metric. And again, the reason that these meetings are really important is because a lot of people don't know what reach means and that's okay. It's your job again, as a service provider to explain that to them. So for those watching who maybe don't know what that means, reach is the total number of accounts that saw your content. So it differs from impressions because impressions is the total number of times that your content was seen. So basically 25,000 people saw posts of mine on Instagram this month, which is pretty cool. And then we also did by engagement. So total of 3000 total engagements on Instagram, which is also a pretty you know impressive number. I think if I was a client and I saw a number like that, that's pretty big again for, for a, a smaller account. So we can again, look for trends. It looks like these are all pretty much ordered very similarly. You know, the top posts are top three posts, three, four posts are the same. So we can infer a few things, you know, half of those posts, more than half of those posts were taken outside. So we can look at visual style and say, maybe we need to do more photo shoots outside. Maybe, obviously these are like all faces. People really like faces on Instagram. Um, maybe it was something I was wearing if, if maybe my hairstyle was the same. You know, look for those trends and try to figure out what people are resonating with. So we add that into our key takeaways. It looks like captions is another thing. Obviously you can't see it in these little tiny thumbnails, but I could go back on my phone or on you know the web platform and see what the captions were like to try to see what the trends were with that. And it looks like the posts with the longer blog style captions actually performed the best. Posts with faces and you know, I'm gonna continue to test different hashtag sets and schedule a branding shoot for the team because we need more photos of those faces to keep that engagement high. Twitter, so go into Twitter analytics. I just give a little overview screenshot of the total impressions over the 28 day period and my engagement rate for the month, which was 5.9%. And you know, compare that in the little notes here, impressions are up over 33K. So again, I'm not gonna say 33.8K. Actually, I could probably even massage that a little bit and say nearly 34K if I wanted to. Impressions in the past 30 days, but I just put over 33 top post by engagement, and I call out their engagement rate down below. So 8.6% engagement, 8.2% engagement, and then top post by impressions, which were really pretty much the same set of tweets and the number of impressions that that saw, which is huge. Like looking at that number, I only have 2000, I think, Twitter followers, it's not that big. It's one of my smaller platforms. And 5,000 people saw these tweets, 5,000, or well, 5,000 times. Impressions is how many times the, post, the tweet was seen. So this tweet was seen over 5,000 times. That's pretty huge. So again, if I was like a client, I would be very impressed by this. I just delivered a report last week to a client that is brand new. They have like no Twitter followers. And one of their tweets got like 600 impressions. It's like, you know, that stuff matters in a brand awareness campaign or a brand awareness goal. So don't, don't, don't sleep on these metrics, you guys. Controversial opinions and threads perform the best. Retweets and replies help drive engagement. Uh, we're gonna continue to test different post types, blah, blah, blah. So that's pretty much what I 
that's pretty much it. And then usually, I didn't do this for myself personally because I just didn't honestly want to spend the time, but I would probably include a final page that just maybe had a total wrap up of total number of impressions for the month, total number of clicks, total number of follower growth, things like that, just kind of like an overall page. Maybe you would do a to-do or kind of a wrap up of like, okay, here are the things that me, the social media manager is gonna focus on. Here are some campaigns that are coming up for next month and what we have planned, whatever you wanna do, but I think it's good to kind of close it out, whether written on the page or just verbally in your meeting. But that's it. That's how I report on metrics to my clients. I hope that this was helpful for you. One thing I always like to say is I'm not a designer. I think it's great to take the information, but you know, jazz it up, like add your own branding or add your client's branding and colors to these reports to kind of make it a little bit more fun. I think adding your client's branding and colors and stuff like that can, um, you know, help them feel like you're a little bit more in line with their goals and that you're, you know, paying a little bit more attention to them. So just keep that in mind. Don't just like necessarily use this blank white page and copy word for word everything that I did. Make it your own. I think that's super, super important and will help you as a business owner. So anyway, I hope this was helpful. Please leave a thumbs up if it was. Subscribe if you haven't yet. Yeah, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.